Let's pray. Gracious God, um, let your spirit dwell with us. Um, let the beauty of your Sabbath uh, become a part of the beauty of our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so here's what it actually looks like when I try and take a Sabbath on Mondays, which is the day that I take as a Sabbath day. Technically, I guess I'm working today, right? Um, so I'll wake up usually at the same time as every other day uh, because Anne will come in around 7.30 to see if Heather has left for work yet. And then um, once I have shown any signs of being awake, then the cat will jump onto the bed and begin purring and snuggling me in a very passive-aggressive way so that she can get me to come get up and um, feed her the good stuff, feed her the wet food, right? So then Anne will be watching a cartoon and eating a waffle, and then I'll sit down to some oatmeal and do a devotion. And then after that, we'll take things slow. And more than once, I will look at the dishes that are sitting in the sink or in the dish rack and then wish that I had gotten around to putting them away or doing the dishes the night before. Um, and then I'll go outside and do a little weeding in the garden and pretend that that shouldn't count as work because it has to be done every day, right? I figure I can get away with work that has to be done every day, like putting away the toaster or rinsing my breakfast dishes. Um, and then also I, I try to avoid buying things. Uh, but the idea is to not do any work that doesn't have to be done during the Sabbath time. Uh, and then after lunch, we'll often take a trip out of the house to a state park or nearby to the library. And if I'm lucky, there will be a time during the Sabbath day where I'm feeling grateful for the time and the beauty of nature around me. And I've managed to really be in the moment and nowhere else. It's kind of like a silence and a rest. Although often it's not silent, but there you'll hear the sound of water running or um, and playing or uh, leaves rustling in the wind. And then 4 o'clock is the end of Sabbath time, and at that point uh, we'll make our way home or the game ends, and then I kind of co go crazy doing dishes and straightening things up. So um, when I was a kid... Uh, Sabbath seemed, Sabbath seemed like an old-fashioned and oppressive requirement for Christians, right? Uh, my family went to church every week, I think, pretty much, which is actually one way that we observe Sabbath. And then I remember the house was usually kind of quiet on Sunday afternoons uh, because my dad was taking a nap. Uh, but I don't, remember, I don't remember that being like a, a, a part of uh, connected with observing the Sabbath. That's kind of just what we did. I remember reading about how in the little house on the prairie books, it was really hard for the little kids because they weren't allowed to do anything but sit still and read the Bible, which sounded very strict. Um, and then there were gospel stories about Sabbath that all had to do with ways that Jesus would get in trouble for doing something on the Sabbath. So he heals a man, for example, and then he gets grief from the Pharisees for doing that. Or his disciples pull some head heads of wheat on uh, off of the grain to chew on as a snack and then people point that out as a great feeling. And the Sabbath, Jesus answers, was made for people and not the other way around. Which I heard mostly as, therefore it's not super important and don't really feel like you need to make an effort there, right? So to me as a kid, the Sabbath was just, or as a kid uh, growing up, was just a bunch of meaningless rules about what not to do that we didn't actually have to follow, right? So it was something of a revelation when I read a book called The Sabbath by Abraham Joshua Heschel um, in seminary. He's writing from a Jewish perspective rather than a Christian one, so it was um, particularly fresh and surprising to me. And he gave positive metaphors and understandings of the Sabbath, not just here's what you can't do, but here's what the Sabbath is for and what it's about. Uh, one image of the Sabbath is as a queen, so just like you'd prepare for and give your full attention to a beautiful and powerful queen, so the Sabbath commands our respect and our love. The Sabbath is like a temple, but in time. So instead of having uh, reminders of faith that come with being in a specific building, the Sabbath has its own rituals and its faith reminders built into the time. The Sabbath is also about appreciating what is and preparing for what is to come. So on the Sabbath, in a certain way, we say the world can turn without us. We don't need to work. But it's also a time to move into a different way of seeing the world, to see the world as exactly the way it should be. So I tend to look at those dishes in my sink and think, I really want those to be clean and put away, but a Sabbath outlook might be more interested in the beauty of the way the plates lie or in gratitude for the food that was received 
on those plates, right? It is definitely a shift in thinking. <laughs> Heschel tells a story about a man who was out walking in his fields on a Sabbath day and saw a broken fence. And his first thought was, oh, I need to fix that. I'll make a note to fix that. And then the man's second thought was, because I thought of that on the Sabbath, I won't ever fix it as a reminder that I need to stay in that space of gratitude rather than one of fixing and laboring. Which, um, so that act of assessing and planning to fix the fence, in other words, was a kind of labor for the man. And I'll say that's really admirable and an ideal, and I'm, I'm just not quite there yet. But I like the story because it sort of puts it to an extreme, right? You keep thinking, oh, shouldn't he just fix the fence? But no, it's a reminder. So there's this practice of gratitude and acceptance of what is on the Sabbath, but also, and this is me not able to separate the Christian and the Jewish views out here a little bit, but um, it's also about the end goal of history, right? So Heschel would say this differently, but what I've pulled from it is that Sabbath is also a practice of the kingdom of God. It's a way of saying, what will it look like when the kingdom of God that Jesus taught about actually arrives on earth? What are we going to do with our time if we don't have to always be striving? What are we going to do when heaven and earth have become one in a new heaven and a new earth? Are we still going to be fixing fences, or will we be able to relax and enjoy this amazing new reality? Observing Sabbath is a way of practicing for what we're hoping for, and in a way moving it closer by not putting it off until all the dishes are done, all the carpets are vacuumed, all the harvest is gathered in, all the orphans are rescued, all the injustices are vanquished. There's an already to appreciate and a not yet to anticipate, and both of those are honored in a holy Sabbath. So this Sunday we've done some things that could look like work, right? We put together sandwiches and lunch bags, and some health kits, a uh, hundred sandwiches. And we're going to go hand them out to people who are living on the streets. And I'd like to invite you, even as we're putting faith into action, to also hold this in the spirit of Sabbath. First, because this is holy work to feed hungry people. But it's also holy work because it's a chance to connect, to share a word of peace, of peace and to see the face of Christ in the face of people that we meet. Each person is a child of God and a word of love. So it's traditional to think of the Sabbath as being one of the first five commandments, right? And so going on to the, the first of these two um, lovingly recreated tablets here, right? No, no one? All right, Charlton Heston. Okay, anyway. Um, but the thing is, Sabbath, the Sabbath, as God tells it, tells it, is not just for the people of Israel, but for everyone, for servants and sojourners and for farm animals um, each week. And even... The fields for growing ga- ga- grain are to take a Sabbath every seven years, which we didn't read, but it's in there somewhere. It's justice. It's good news for all to pause for a day of rest, not just for some holy minority. So I'm still working on my Sabbath practice and kind of inventing it as I go along in a way. And it's amazing to me how every week it's so hard not to get back into work mode to check my email, or just scrub one or two things, or just do a little weeding. It's hard to get out of the mode of fixing and shaping and correcting and move into a different mode of prayer and of gratitude, of playing and resting. Probably because this is, you know, against some American values around constant progress and measuring our worth as a human against our accomplishments. And the constant accessibility of Uh, Social media probably doesn't help. And then the demands of a capitalist system that we constantly be in a loop of buying and using and throwing things away. You know, it's all easy stuff to just ignore and set aside, right? Uh, But if you're like me, uh, so so there's a lot that we're coming up against, I guess. Uh, Practice of Sabbath is definitely countercultural. And if you're like me and the practice of observing the Sabbath is a new one for you, um, I had some thoughts about how to get started. Uh, first thing would be don't try to do a whole day all at once. Like It will make you crazy. Um, start by putting a priority on coming to church um, and saying no to other commitments so you can make this one consistently. Uh, and that can be a project all in itself, the way things are uh, these days. And then find a way to extend that time. Maybe you have a family meal every week, or like us, we have our family trip to the park. Or if not with family, then with friends, or even just an hour spent sitting and not doing anything, like literally sitting with your hands in your lap, staring into space and thinking can have some amazing results, or at least demonstrate how hard it can be to do, 
right? And to be honest, that's probably the hardest one for me, is to just sit and like stare into space. Although if I manage to do it, I usually really like it. But anyway, maybe that's introvert's um, spiritual practice. Um, I'd also invite you to think about um, if there could be a ritual. Um, like for me, the song that we just sang has been helpful to kind of like be a reminder. Um, so special songs or maybe lighting a candle, taking, doing a special ritual, different activities, time with people that we love. All of this can be an anticipation for what the world will be like when God's, with God's patience and help we've managed to bring heaven to earth. So I invite you this week to set aside one, one more holy hour and in that time to rest in God's presence and to mark that time with some kind of ritual. So what would it look like if we could all observe the Sabbath together? First, this is a contribution to justice, a way of stepping off the consumer treadmill and onto a virtuous spiral of gratitude. Second, rest helps us to be more human, more healthy, more alive to creative possibilities. Third, the holy time gives us an opportunity to connect with God and to listen for what God might be saying to us. An opportunity for wisdom, for growth, and connection to what really matters. The Sabbath is a gift from God, and one well worth unwrapping. In accepting this gift, we take concrete steps to walk humbly with God. We put our faith into action, in other words. May the spirit of Sabbath bless us, and may God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's have some silence and some time for reflection. And then uh, 